Hello, welcome to chapter six, where we will look at the educated Negro leaves the masses. Now, I hope that you're always considering the factor that I talk about in terms of why we're doing this is that social engineering creates predictive behavior. And as we move into chapter six, you'll see that uh, when Dr. Woodson discussed that the more educated the Negro becomes, then the less comfortable he or she is in evangelical settings or church settings. Uh, I found this to be very disturbing, but very true as I think about the congregation that I'm familiar with. Praise the Lord always. Uh, I hope that you will share this information with others. I think that's very, very important that we understand Dr. Woodson was the second PhD to graduate from Harvard in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, the second PhD of African-American nature. I had the opportunity to go there, but uh, chose my wife instead. Amen. All right. Okay, let's get to chapter six and uh, we'll see, see what happens. Praise the Lord. As we begin chapter six, we can see this. One of the most striking evidences of the failure of higher education among Negroes is their estrangement from the masses. The very people upon whom they must eventually count for carrying out a program of progress. So our educational basis, uh, the goal was for us to progress. Uh, and that meant that ones with educations, higher education would come and help others. Uh, I, I continue to read. Of this, the Negro church the, of this, the Negro churches supply the most striking illustration. The large majority of Negro communicants still belong to these churches, but the more education the Negroes undergo, the less comfort they seem to find in these evangelical groups. Wow, true. That's what my introduction was about. Most Negroes returning as finished pro products from such institutions then are forever lost to the popular Negro churches. The Negro church, however, although not a shadow of what it ought to be, is the great asset of the race. It is part of the capital that the race must invest to make his future. I agree with that 100%. The Negro church has taken the lead in education in the schools of the race. It has supplied a forum for the thought of the highly educated Negro. It has originated a large portion of the business controlled by Negroes. And in many cases, it has made it possible for Negro professional men to exist, the church, if you will. It is unfortunate then, as I continue to read, that these classes do not do more to develop the institution. In thus neglecting it, they are throwing away what they have to obtain something which they think they need. In many respects then, the Negro church during recent generations has become corrupt. Oh my God. 
The highly educated Negroes have turned away from the people in the churches and the gap between the masses and the talented 10th is rapidly widening. Some highly educated Negroes say that they have not lost their interest in religion, that they have gone into churches with a more intellectual atmosphere in keeping with their new thoughts and aspirations. Talking with a friend from Alabama the other day, the author, I like the way he called himself that, Dr. Woodson, found out that after her father had died and she moved to Washington, she forsook the Baptist church in which she had been a prominent worker and joined a ritualistic church which is more fashionable. That brings to mind a relative of mine that did the exact same thing. Such a change of faith is all right in a sense, for no sensible person today would dare to make an argument in favor of any particular religion. Religion is but religion. If the people live up to the faith they profess. Preach, Dr. Woodson. Preach. The point here is that the rit ritualistic churches and to which these Negroes have gone do not touch the masses, and they show no promising future for racial development. <laughs> How an educated Negro can thus leave the church of his people and accept such Jim Crow Crowanism. Jim Crowanism has always been a puzzle. It's a puzzle to me too, Dr. Wilson. I don't understand. That's why we doing this book. He cannot be a thinking man. Amen. It may be sort of a slave psychology which causes this preference for the leadership of the oppressor. We imitate our oppressors in terms of our language, the use of negative words that we address each other with. That's where that stems. I continue to read. With respect to developing the masses then, the Negro race has lost ground in recent years. Period. Editorial comment. This book was written in 1933. I continue to read. In 1880, when the Negroes had begun to make themselves felt in teaching, in 1880, when the Negroes had begun to make themselves felt in teaching, the attitude of the leaders was different from what it is today. At that time, men went off to school to, to prepare themselves for the uplift of a downtrodden people. Amen. In our time, in our time, too many Negroes go to school to memorize certain facts to pass examinations for jobs. After they obtain these positions, they pay little attention to humanity. This attitude of the educated Negro toward the masses results from the general trend of all persons toward selfishness, but it works more disastrously among the Negroes than among the whites because the lower class of the latter have had, have had so much more opportunity than we. Sometimes you find as many as two or three storefront church churches on a, in a single block where Negroes indulge in heathen-like practices which could hardly be equaled in the jungle. The Negroes in Africa have not descended to such depths as we see in these United States storefront churches for black Negroes. Although born in 
brought up in the Black Belt of the South, the author never saw there was such idolatrous tendencies as he is seeing under the dome of the Capitol, Washington, D.C. When a man sees persons of his own race tend tending downward to a level of disgrace, he does not rest until he works out some plan to lift up such unfortunates to higher ground. But the Negro forgets the delinquents of his race and goes his way to feather his own nest as he has done in leaving the masses in the popular churches. This is sad indeed, for the Negro church is the only institution our race controls. Save, save the dramatization of practical education by Booker T. Washington, Negroes have not influenced the system at all in America. In the church, however, the Negroes have, has had sufficient freedom to develop this institution in his own way, but he has failed to do so. The educated Negro minister is so trained as to drift away from the masses and the illiterate preachers in who, into whose hands the people ever, ever, ever eventually fall are able to develop a doctrine and procedure of their own. The dominant thought is to make use of the dogma of the whites as a means to the end. Whether the system, the educational system is what it should be or not, it serves the purpose. The Methodists and the Baptists split up further on account of the custom of holding slaves. And the Negroes arrayed themselves on the respective sides. The religious agitators divided still more on the questions beyond human power to understand. And the Negroes started out in a similar fashion to imitate them. By their peculiar reasoning, too, theologians have sanctioned most of the ills of the ages. They justified the Inquisition, serfdom, and slavery. Theologians of our time defend segregation and the annihilation of one race by the other. Theologians. They have drifted away from righteousness into an effort to make wrong seem to be right. As said above, the Negro has been so busy doing what he is told that to do that he has not stopped long enough to think about the meaning of these things. He has borrowed the ideas of his traducers instead of dwell, delving into things and working out some thought of his own. And I conclude, the highly educated Negroes who know better than to follow these unprincipled men have abandoned these popular churches while serving as the avenue of the oppressor's propaganda the Negro church, although doing some good, has prevented the union of dispersed, diverse elements and has kept the race too weak to overcome foes who have purposely taught Negroes how to quarrel and fight about trifles until their enemies can overthrow them. This is the keynote to the control of the so-called inferior races by the self-styled superior. The one thinks and plans while the other in excited fashion seizes upon and destroys his brother with whom he should cooperate.
Well, that's it for chapter six. Um, in reading the chapter, what stays in the forefront of my mind is my favorite scripture that has allowed me to work through many things in my life. And that scripture uh, comes from Matthew 16, 24, and it states this, in order to become a disciple of Jesus Christ, one must first deny themselves, take up their cross, and follow Jesus Christ.